Hey you guys, it's your girl T and I know a lot of folks have been wanting to know am I going to do a recap of The Real Housewives of Atlanta and the answer is yes. I did watch the premiere. I was mad because I was not able to watch it live. I watched it when it hit the West Coast because I don't have Dish Network. But the good news is I am going back to Minneapolis for the holidays. So I'll be back with my boys. I'll be back with my family and I will be able to live tweet and watch it with all you guys because we have a ball when we watch Real Housewives of Atlanta and it did not feel right literally talking to four people when I'm used to talking to hundreds of people as the show is airing so but this Sunday was crazy I had to tune in I made sure that I had nothing to do because you guys know I'm a big fan of the Real Housewives and it was just insane watching everything play out so in the opening scene we have Phaedra and Apollo and Apollo cannot say his ass was looking hella good with that full beard he was looking super fine so um, Phaedra decides to basically take her kids Aiden and Dylan she takes them out to Augusta Georgia with her mom she says that the paparazzi is all around the house and she doesn't want her kids getting, you know, filmed on camera and this, this, and that. And we go to the house and there's no paparazzi. Like, nobody cares. Y'all aren't famous like that where people are, like, really checking for y'all. So there's no paparazzi. It's literally just Apollo there. Apollo's brother comes and his brother is full white. They have the same mom, different dads. So his brother comes to, you know, support him. He's the only one there for him. And you can tell Apollo's really nervous. He's hurt because he felt like, you know what, I could be here playing with my kids, spending time with them. You know, what if they end up keeping me? And, you know, I haven't seen my kids in a few days because fatal don't bounce. You know, I expected her to be here for me. And so a lot of us were feeling bad for Apollo because Apollo broke down crying. Probably the realest we've ever seen Apollo on this show. He's never been as real and as open and honest as he was during this time. Usually he's just a little pretty boy. He's not allowed to say much. He's just favorite arm candy. You know, but to see him really break down and, and, and see how hurt he was, it was sad. You know what I'm saying? It did make me choke up. I don't give a damn who was offended by my tweet. But my thing is this. While it was sad watching him choke up, you know, thinking about the kids being away from their father for the next eight years, at the end of the day, Apollo did do the crime. You know, like I said in previous videos, when you do the crime, you have to face up to your responsibility. You have to do the time. You know what I mean? Does that mean that Fedor had no idea what was going on? I don't believe it. I just don't buy that she had no idea what was going on. I just don't buy that you can sit there and watch your man or even listen to your man talk about him tricking out $8,000 in a strip club and you're not asking where he got that money from. Because we all know the husbands on the Real Housewives of Atlanta, they don't get paid. All the money goes to Phaedra, so he's not getting paid for him being on the show. So I don't believe that she had no idea about the situation, but at the end of the day, Apollo needs to go do his time, point blank, period. So moving on to the next scene. So in the next scene, we have Nene, and Nene's getting her drag queen on, honey. So she's really happy because she's going to be starring in Zumanity, and I saw this about a year ago in Vegas, and it's a really cool show. It's really sexual, and they usually don't deal with any celebrities, so this is a really big deal for Nene because they don't play when they come to them Cirque du Soleil shows. They don't just let anybody get involved. So for her to be a part of this, I think is a blessing for her. She should definitely be happy, definitely be humbled, you know, being that she's the only celebrity who's ever been asked to be a part of this show. And so she's just really, really excited. She's starting a whole new venture. And she feels like, you know what, ever since everything ended with Glee and the new normal, you know, other doors have opened for her. And for that, I'm very happy for Nene. And once again, Greg is there with her, being her little lap dog, carrying her purse, making sure she has everything she needs. Greg is He's being a good house husband, okay? Moving on to the next scene. So in the next scene we have Kenya and Kenya's being sad and depressed and she feels like it's not fair that people are making excuses for Portia and she was embarrassed because she was attacked on national television and beat up and you know she's just trying to play victim but she forgets the role that she played that led up to her getting drugged on the floor and not even really drugged it was whack. Portia just pulled her hair and they both fell. But I find it funny that Kenya you know conveniently forgets what she did to basically cause everything that spiraled out of control for her. So with that being said Kenya does have one friend okay. So Kenya's only friend who happens to be with her is Cynthia. And Cynthia, you know, she's just a trip. If Cynthia wasn't beautiful, I think folks would go in on her more. Cynthia is gorgeous, and yes, beauty is her business. But I think for her to get up there and say that she's happy that she's not friends with Nene no more, and that Nene was causing conflict with her marriage, and that Nene wasn't really a friend and all this other shit, it just goes to show you that Cynthia is just going to go wherever the wind blows. So I don't think Kenya should be boosted by Cynthia's friendship. If anything, Kenya you should be kind of offended and look at Cynthia with the side eye because it's like all these years you was up under Nene's butt but now you want to be friends with me because you got nobody else to really hang with because nobody really takes Cynthia seriously because again she's going to be cool with whoever is conveniently there 
You know, so I just find it funny that she wants to blame Nene for the demise of her marriage. But again, did Nene tell Peter to go get a love shack down the street when you were, you know, suffering from fibroids? Did Nene tell Peter to disrespect you, talk to you crazy all these seasons? Did Nene tell your mother and your sister to hide your marriage certificate so that way you couldn't marry Peter Thomas? You know, I just find it funny that she's blaming Nene, but she's not blaming herself or Peter for the demise or for whatever was going on in their marriage. Now all of a sudden that Nene's not in their relationship, all of a sudden their marriage is supposedly better. I'm not buying none of that bullshit. Shit. Moving on to the next scene. So in the next scene we have Portia and when I tell y'all Portia was looking slamming in this swimsuit. I love Portia's shape. I love her body. Like I said on Twitter, anybody who has something to say about Portia was showing too much and she looks trashy. I thought Portia looked good. You know what I'm saying? Fake titties or not, she has a beautiful shape. Candy came to go see Portia at the studio while she was trying on the swimsuit and getting ready for her photo shoot. Um, she's starting a whole new hairline. It's called Naked Hair and it's a whole new line of weaves. We know reality TV star people, they love to do hairlines and they love to sell weave lines and everything else. But Portia does have really, really long nails natural beautiful hair but she wears weaves to protect her hair so candy came down to talk to her about the whole reunion thing and what happened Portia is telling her you know what I refuse to talk about it I'm not apologizing it is what it is I don't care so you know candy's like okay well fine I thought you would want to talk about it and Portia's like no nah, I'm cool you know that was in the past I'm doing my own thing I'm focusing on my own brand I'm focusing on this hairline I don't have time to worry about Kenya and all her nonsense so moving on to the next scene on the next scene we have candy and Todd and they're finally settling into marriage life and basically Todd's daughter is going to be moving in with them um Todd's daughter is now 18 years old and Todd didn't meet her until she was five years old but Todd has been in her life ever since then so she's moving in and when you see where Todd's daughter is going to be staying it's like okay this is cute it's a nice little room but Todd is feeling some type of way because he feels like you know what how's my 18 year old daughter just staying in the room but then you have a, a 11 year old daughter and she has a whole wing she has a mother-in-law suite and it's that out with two flat screen TVs. I mean, Riley's room is tricked out. I can see Riley having a badass sweet 16 party. Candy knows no bonds when it comes to her daughter. She admits that she does overcompensate for Riley and she feels like, you know what, if she has it for her daughter, if she has it to give to her daughter, then why shouldn't she? I hope with that being said, I hope that Candy is teaching Riley about the value of money and how it is to not have so much because, you know, Candy is really self-made. Candy has been very, you know, frugal. She doesn't just trick out for money like that. Candy has held on to her investments. Candy is a very strong businesswoman and she's about her money. So I just hope that she ends up teaching Riley the same thing, which I have no doubt that she will. But I do agree with Todd. Todd feels like, you know what? His daughter should be able to drive a used Hyundai. She needs to work for her things. She needs to realize that, you know, money doesn't grow on trees. You know, it's okay to spoil them maybe now and then, but not 24-7. So I can definitely agree with Todd's style of parenting as well. So it's going to be really interesting to see how this whole dynamic plays out this season with the girls because Riley has so much. I don't see Riley downgrading for nobody. Moving on to the next scene. So in the next scene, Apollo is there. He finds out his sentencing. He finds out that he's gotten eight years in prison and that he has a few weeks to report. And so Apollo's brother is there with him. The mom is there with him. And I guess the mother was some type of drug addict, crackhead. So she wasn't really in Apollo's life. So she really didn't raise him. Apollo and his other brother, who's also sitting in prison right now, they had to raise themselves. So, you know, he's had kind of like a hard knock life. But my thing is, being that he came from that hard knock life, Apollo really should have used the situation as a blessing. How many people can do about five to six years in prison, get out, get with a lawyer, end up on a reality TV show? You know what I'm saying? It's like Apollo received so many blessings. He should have just been content with being a house husband, you know, doing his little fitness DVDs. People are really into that because Apollo has a nice body. I think he should have just stayed doing the legit thing, but he's just so attracted to fast money, and that's when he got caught up. So Apollo's really upset because he's heard from everybody but Phaedra. Phaedra hasn't texted him. She hasn't called him. You know, and, the, and his family is kind of upset, too, because they feel like, you know what, you know, how can you not be there for your husband? How can you not be there for him when he was there for you and, you know, he was playing your little wingman and you guys spent $60,000 on this christening for Mr. President. You know, Apollo was there the whole time while you were spending all this money and it seems like he was trying to keep this lifestyle, you know, to keep it with Phaedra. So they're kind of upset about the whole situation. Apollo ends up leaving his mom and his brother and he goes straight over to Candy and Todd's house. Candy and Todd are kind of surprised to see him and Todd feels like, you know what, Phaedra needs to step up and Phaedra should be there for Apollo and it's not fair that Phaedra's not there. Like, Apollo should be going home to Phaedra, not coming to Candy and Todd's house but Candy and Todd are very close with them 
And so she feels like she needs to talk to Phaedra as well. And Candy feels like, you know, Phaedra should be Apollo's ride or die. And maybe they should go talk to Phaedra later on and let Phaedra know how she feels. But you know, I kind of feel like Candy shouldn't have too much to say about their relationship because Candy's also scared to, you know, basically stick up for her man in front of Mama Joyce. So I don't think she should have too much room to say about what Phaedra should or shouldn't do because there's a lot of things that Candy should do in her relationship that she's not doing herself. So Apollo's basically telling them that, you know, he got eight years, but he's cool. You know, he'll figure it out, but he's very hurt by Phaedra's actions. So finally, he ends up going home to go see Phaedra. So in the last and final scene, Phaedra finally decides to bring the boys back from Augusta. And so she comes home, and it's literally like if looks could kill. You can tell that Apollo is pissed off, Phaedra is pissed off. There's just all this mess going on, and it's sad that they're arguing and going back and forth, and not only in front of Phaedra's mom, but in front of these two innocent kids. And, you know, they're just arguing, and Apollo's like, you know what, I did this for you. You don't appreciate anything. You know, you, you put me in a situation to go do all this, and Phaedra's mad. She feels like, you know, Apollo's ruined her reputation. Folks are giving Phaedra the side eye. Folks are thinking that Phaedra's involved. You know, she's a lawyer your house is this look and Apollo's like all you care about all you care about is what other people think all you care about is your reputation I'm just tired of this shit I'm tired of you disrespecting me you know I'm just tired of this whole situation you can just tell that Apollo's just very very frustrated Fade is very, very frustrated. You can also tell that they have not been happy in a long time. And Fade feels like she doesn't own anything because Apollo's had a wandering eye. Apollo's been doing all his little dirt on the side. But now that all this has come to play, all of a sudden she's supposed to be a good wife and a mother. So it was just really, really sad to just see their dynamic because, you know, we've been watching them from before she had Aiden to, you know, when she got pregnant with her second to, you know, when they got married and... You know, and, and Apollo said some things in his confessional where he felt like, you know what, did you ever really love me? Was I ever really your husband or did you just use me for what I could bring to the table? So I think even Apollo is seeing that, you know, possibly Phaedra just use him because he's handsome, he's cute, he has a nice body. And she needed somebody kind of, you know, kind of young and dumb to kind of play that role because somebody who was more established wouldn't have played second fiddle to Phaedra. And she needed somebody to kind of play second fiddle to her. And at that time, Apollo's willing to do that. But like I said from Jump, where Frederick made the mistake was getting with the ex felon from Jump any damn way. How do you get with somebody three days after they get out of prison? So obviously they had some type of relationship before he went into prison. So I think not only did Apollo bring a lot of stuff to her name and put a lot of stuff on her, I also feel like Fade about a lot of this on herself as well because she should have made a better choice in a husband and a father for her kids. She chose to get with an ex-felon. She chose to get with somebody who did all types of white-collar crime, who for whatever reason got lured back into that lifestyle. But like I said before, I don't feel like she's just totally innocent, like she had no idea what was going on. I just don't buy that whatsoever. You know, in a, in a previous season, we seen where Apollo bought her like a brand new Mercedes Benz. Well, if she was the one who had all the money, what did he get money to buy her a brand new car? You know, it's like, why wasn't she asking all these types of questions? After them arguing and going back and forth, Apollo basically says, you know what, he wants a divorce. He wants all this done and situated before he goes off to jail. He does not want to go to jail and then come out eight years later. He has nothing. He has no assets. He has nothing at all. So he wants a divorce. He's just tired of the bullshit. And Fader's like, you know what, that's fine. We can get a divorce. I'm over this. It's not no big deal to me. You know, when can we make this happen? So like I said, the whole situation was just really, really sad. And especially being that they were arguing going back and forth in front of the two little boys so as we all know Aiden's really really smart and I, you know even if he wasn't in the room per se he's not deaf he can hear them arguing back and forth and there's so many things that we don't see once the camera goes off so I'm sure they've been doing a lot of arguing and things like that in front of the kids as well and that might have played a part into why Fader chose to leave with the kids and just go on a breakdown to Augusta so anyways go ahead and leave a comment let me know your thoughts on the season premiere of the Real Housewives of Atlanta this is my show I will be recapping this I will see you guys next week if you're not follow me make sure you follow me my name is at lovely t and i'm at lovely t 2002 on instagram all right deuces